of several years ago when I was an electrical helper, uh, another person and I were working in a spray booth at Skagit to pull in some high temperature wires. The wiring was going to heck in these big mercury vapor, 1,000 watt mercury vapor fixtures. So we went into the building adjacent to it where the panels that fed this building were at and we found the appropriate breaker. But This was a 480 volt three-phase panel and we shut it off, tagged it do not operate and went to work. And there's a junction box there with several circuits in it and I put my hand in this box to pull out a wire and bang, blew my hand back out of the box. Turned to my partner and says, I think we need to check this out some more. Moral of the story is, is you need to test for dead first. Don't take anything for granted. And you can, you can live through the day or make it through the day. You know, continue to do your work. Now let's go over what we've learned so far. Proper lotto procedure calls for, first, notifying the appropriate personnel, including everyone who might be affected, that you intend to de-energize equipment. De-energizing the equipment. Locking and tagging the equipment. Testing to ensure the equipment is de-energized and isolated from energy sources and that all stored energy is released. Working on the equipment. Notifying the appropriate personnel that you intend to re-energize the equipment. Removing your locks and tags. And finally, re-energizing the equipment. There was an incident a few years ago at Boundary Powerhouse where iron workers were going to do some work in a scroll case. They were busy setting up. They'd already checked their, their tag out, not lock out, made sure everything was secured, went to work, started putting in their equipment, um, had lowered their equipment into the, onto the scroll case itself, went up for a break. And when they came back down, there was water flowing in the scroll case and their welder, welding machines were out in the river had been shot out by this wall of water like a mile long and a couple inches high because another worker had not registered that they were there and had opened the wrong head gate and started that water flowing toward them. Lockout, tagout, and whether it works is like asking whether people are saved by looking both ways at a crosswalk. You don't notice until somebody doesn't look and gets hit by a car. It's the only time you notice. For answers to questions this video doesn't address, consult your workgroup's lotto procedures or the Safety, Health, and Wellness Unit. And remember, these procedures will continue to be refined in response to new information, changes in regulations, and your feedback.